You know, initially we always, we talked about, when I came on board, and why focus on Latinos? And I guess the question is, why not focus on Latinos? Because we are the, large, the fastest growing demographic group in the United States. We are the largest minority in the United States. Uh, we are currently represent 16.3% of the U.S. population. <coughs> Uh, there are about 50.5 million uh, people in the United States that are Latinos or Hispanics. And the you know, Hispanics, we are not a homogeneous group. Uh, we are a very intrinsic, complicated group that uh, politicians, marketers, high schools, colleges have a hard, uh, hard time trying to decipher because we are so complex, because we come from different nations, because we are currently in different stages of a culture a culture action in the United States. We have those who uh, you know are recent immigrants, we have some who uh, have adjusted or acculturated or assimilated, we have those who are first generation. So we have different uh, various subgroups in the Latino community who complicates matters for for uh, for everyone. Here in Minnesota, we currently represent 4.7% of the Latino population, and according to, to the Minnesota Demographic Center, uh, by 2015, we're going to become the largest minority in the state. Uh, it's currently, according to the 2010 census, uh, 200, over 250,000 people who, you know, who I guess fill out the form because we, in the community, strongly believe that. I know there are maybe 100,000 didn't uh, participate in the census because they want to stay off the radar and they want to they want to be known. They just want to work hard. And they want to send their kids to school and they want their kids to want their kids to be successful. Now, in contrast to the late 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, the population in the United States, Minnesota, and in many states is being driven by births rather than new. Uh, immigrants. Those who came in the 90s, uh, either as kids or those who were born in the 90s, they are now in the fertility age where now they have kids on their own. So that's what is fueling currently the uh, Latino population. Uh, here in, uh, in the state of Minnesota, which we grew, grew 74% uh, in, uh, in the last decades. Now, uh, the population, we have, we have the, the largest young population we, in Minnesota, in just Minnesota alone. 45% of the Latino population is less than 20, which poses a great opportunity, it poses a great challenge, and it's something that uh, if we don't encourage our kids to go to high school, and stay in high school, and then college, uh, then uh, we're going to have a, a huge, huge uh, problem. The high school dropout rate for Latinos uh, currently is the highest in the nation. Uh, we are about 17.6%, which is pretty, pretty high. I mean, they we're doing better than before. It used to be over 20, and right now it, it went down to over 17%, but still is the highest. And the second highest is the Native American population, which is about 13.2 percent, which is still pretty high, but we are like, we are like the, the, the highest. There are many factors that are currently affecting uh, the high school dropout rate. Uh, lack of role models. We Latinos take a lot of pride on physical work. We can work uh, long hours. Um, we can do roofing. We can do landscaping. We can do siding. We can do a lot of a lot of hard work, and uh, that's kind of the role models uh, we have. And that is changing, but it's slowly changing. So the, our, our kids right now, they see these hardworking uncles, relatives who are uh, working long, long hours and driving nice trucks, but yeah, it's, it, it, it is uh, not, we think, it's not the smartest way to, you know, for a long-term uh, future. Also, we know that parents uh, offer moral and economic support, but parents do not know how to navigate the higher education system, so they have a hard time trying to lead, by example, uh, their kids. 
because they don't know the, the system. Um, also, another problem that we have in the Latino community is, it, and it's currently affecting the dropout rate, is we have uh, a high rate of pregnancy. So no, now those who are going to, uh, to high school, they drop out because they, many of them will become pregnant, and also because, you know, the, the partner has to work, so now if they hear what the guy had to uh, leave uh, high school and then get into the workforce at a very um, young age. We are, yeah, we're, I'm representing high, uh, higher education. We are making some progress. We uh, went up a little bit. We are now 73% in uh, higher education, which is, is, is higher than it used to be. And this is being driven by uh, enrollment in community college. More Latino students are going to community colleges, uh, either because you know, community colleges are doing a, a better effort, because it's more economical to go to a community college, and because community colleges are also um, hiring more uh, Latino outreach people or sometimes uh, professors. Um, also, another factor that is uh, increasing the enrollment is the uh, number of college age kids, 16, uh, ages 16 and, and 24. They, uh, they have entered this pool, and we currently have uh, 5.7 million uh, college age kids, and out of those 5.7, 1.8 are going to college. So those are good news. The bad news is that only 13% are completing a four-year degree. So that is really that's bad, that's really sad. So we have, we have a lot of students' enrollment, but only 13% are completing a four-year degree. And you know, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to create these uh, successful marketing uh, efforts for Hennepin Tech. But there are some very important key elements to have and implement, develop uh, a marketing initiative because we wanna, if we wanna have someone in higher up that is gonna embrace this initiative. If no one in a higher up position is gonna embrace this initiative, it is not gonna work. It's not gonna work because they're gonna drop the ball and because uh, we need the support if we want, or we need that person to assign a budget. It doesn't matter how big it is, but it has to be a long-term commitment, and it has to be a long-term uh, budget assigned to this, to this initiative. And that person has to have a long-term vision, because this isn't going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in six months, it's not going to happen in a year, it's going to take longer until it becomes Viral, viral meaning that then it becomes word of mouth. You build a body, a student body population of, let's say, 500 people, and then it goes viral because then those students are going to tell other students and relatives, and then you don't have to put a lot of money into a marketing campaign. But now here at have to we think out of the box, so we don't assign huge, uh, a huge budget to marketing efforts because we want to do the most effective. Uh, marketing uh, and use the, the most effective uh, marketing tools. For instance, we have done the uh, <coughs> profile, a student profile ads where we take photos of some of our students, we, answer, we ask them five questions, very basic questions, what are your hobbies, what are you going to school for, um, what, what's your favorite book, and the message we want to send out to those who are reading these paper where we are posting those profiles is these guys are like you, they have a struggle like you, and they have dreams like you, but they have taken action. So if they can do it, you also can do it. Uh, other um, effective initiatives or tools that we have implemented, and this is very grassroots, this is very basic. When we came on, uh, when we started building this team, we knew that we needed to go out to high school because high schools are the natural resources uh, of the students. That's where the high school students are, and that's what you are craving for, or that's what you want. So.
So what you do is you go out there and build relationship with, with high schools, and then you constantly be there, and then the high school uh, outreach or advisors, then they know that Ricardo or Juan Angel are gonna, are, are gonna be there, and they can sell them to them, and then we are gonna help them uh, come into college, to our college or any other college as long as they go to college. And, and last, another, another initiative that we have done very well, we have opened the college to the community. Uh, many families have never been into a college, so we have opened the college for them so they know how it feels to be in a college and they uh, feel comfortable coming to, to to a college. We had the Mexico Bicentennial a couple of years ago. We had the Latina conference. Over 400 uh, young Latinas came to this, uh, at this auditorium. And those are the, uh, the events that are allowing us to be successful or to build successful initiatives because Su casa is, mi casa, your house, you know, the college is your house, basically. Come in, the doors are open. And that has worked uh, wonderfully for us because they feel comfortable and we have built these connections, which is very difficult and very complicated to build. Um, and through this process, what we found out is that we're doing a great job marketing the college or higher education to young Latinos. Uh, but we, all, we also know that uh, not everyone is sustaining it. And it's, it's the numbers that I, I presented to you before, uh, not everyone, they, students are enrolling, but not, they are, are not sustained. So we built these four uh, step master plan that I call, and it's marketing, you know, where we also target parents because parents are the ones who many times make the decision for the kids to go to, to, uh, to college. But we also wanted to focus on retention because uh, we, want them to, we want them to stay here. We know they are gonna face some, some struggles, especially the first year because we all know that the first year, year uh, students, is when they are more prone to uh, walk away from, from, from college. We also wanted to, we want them to be successful. Successful meaning that we want to have someone there to help them and we want that person to direct them to the right place, to the financial aid department. We want to direct them to the, uh, you know, they need help with math and we send them to a tutor or someone that is going to be able to help them. We don't have to have all the answers and how to do it, but we can send them uh, in the right uh, direction. And finally, we want them to uh, graduate. We want them to complete their graduation and, and we'll help them as much as we can to move on and find a nice job that it goes well with, uh, along with their career. Now, this, this is going to work only if you have also the right outreach person. And I want to emphasize how important that is because if you don't have someone, you don't have the human structure to support those students in your college or in your school, then they are not going to succeed. So Hamilton Tech is very happy to have found two people that have the passion. Because you don't have the passion, the passion, as I said, this isn't going to work. You can teach someone how to read, you can teach someone how to write, but you don't teach them passion. Either you have it or you don't have it. You have to have the passion for education to uh, transpire and entice those students to uh, stay in college and, 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 and be successful. And here at Hampton Tech, uh, we have two very passionate people who um, have done the extra mile to make sure that every student here, either Latino and documenter or any other Latino does well in our college, so I'm gonna introduce you now to uh, Ricardo Gonzalez, who started as, the, uh, as an average person and now is the director of the uh, uh, program. No, college readiness. Uh, college readiness, <laughs> of the trio program. <laughs>